everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and happy Valentine's Day! Today we are going to dye some yarn inspired by Valentine's Day and love and hearts and the kitschy kind of decorations that we see this time of year with maybe a little bit of a Chemnitz flair. Uh, I am not going to just stick to red and pink. I have to add some purple. It's me. It's my color that I love. And we're going to have some fun. Today we are going to start off by dyeing 300 grams of this Lorex blend from Wool to Dye For. This yarn is 90% Superwash Merino, 10% Lorex. And you can see that this silver Lorex thread goes through the yarn like an additional ply in a very regular repeating way. So when we dye this yarn with some beautiful saturated colors in an exuberant random fashion, uh, the silver should really pop and it'll be sparkly and fun and perfect for Valentine's Day. I have secured the yarn with some removable nylon zip ties, which thankfully are back in stock on the Amazon link, or at least they were when I reordered more to have on hand just in case. I do reuse them. You can see that they are brightly colored now, um, but you know, you can, it's still handy sometimes for me to have some that have not yet been used because all of the tools and equipment I'm using today are dedicated for dyeing yarn and are never used for food. And that's because we're going to be using commercial acid dyes and you really don't want to use that in the pots and pans that you use to prepare food in case there's any residual dye. Um, so make sure that you're dealing with a clean work surface and use dedicated equipment. I pre-soaked the yarn for around 30 minutes and we've just sort of randomly laid it in the pan. I am now going to come in and add our pre-soaked water back into the pan. I would say that that is 10, 12 cups of water so far. I want to add some more so that way we are in a more immersed situation versus being in a low immersion situation. Okay, I added some more water and you can see that this is letting our yarn really float in here. We're going to be dyeing our yarn today using some dry acid dye powders, which means that I will be putting on safety goggles and a respirator mask. But because the dye will hit the water first, it should spread, start spreading out a bit um, before I come and sort of help it. But I plan to randomly apply it to all of this yarn um, so it's fun and exuberant and beautiful. The three colors I plan to play with today are Cherry Bomb, Electric Violet, and Deep Magenta from Dharma Trading Company. And colors don't always match the little swatches from the poster perfectly, uh, but in the case of these three colors, this is a pretty accurate representation of the hues I think that we'll probably see on the yarn. We don't know exactly how much water is in here, but I'm going to go ahead and add a half cup of white vinegar so the colors can strike in a reasonable rate. Um, I have the heat on low, so we're starting to heat things up, and once we start seeing some movement at the surface, we can start coming and adding the yarn, or adding the dye, I mean. The mask and safety glasses are on, and I am wearing gloves, and we're ready to start speckling. Today, well, I guess we're not really speckling. I'm more just adding powder, and we're going to help it dissolve and move through the yarn. But it sort of feels like speckling a little bit. Like, if some speckles happened, I wouldn't be mad, but we know... Uh, from the Hanukkah 2019 sort of bonus colorway video that this is a yarn base where speckles don't necessarily pop the way that you want them to pop. So we're going to add this dye on and sort of help it move through. We don't necessarily know what's happening beneath the surface. We should be getting decent coverage in here. And, oh goodness, I think I'm just, the water's not that hot yet. Uh, and so I'm just sort of trying to tap this powder 
off. A lot of times this is, might be where I have a yarn mop, but I'm now going to wash and dry my glove before we come in with the next color. The reason we wash and dry the gloves is we don't want to contaminate the dye stocks with different colors and things like that. And we still got some more pink color in there, but it's fine. We're going to have deep reds. We're going to have pinks. We're going to have a lot of different hues in here, and it's going to be beautiful. What I don't know is if the Lurex will ever pick up any color, but I can already, it's, since the water is still a little red, it's a little hard to say for sure what's going to happen. But let's go... Okay, got some of this pink. And the purples will layer on top of some of these other colors, so we'll get some purple hues in here as well. If I waited a little longer before coming in with these other colors, then we might see some more speckles on here. But as I said, that like dark on dark speckles, don't really show up as well with those pops of the Lurex. Uh, so going in a little more random with some of this purple, covering up some of that white that I see. And then again, I'm just trying to get some of this color off of my fingers. I'll come back in with a spoon. I don't want to engulf the pink. It's looking now like we've got some nice like maroons in here as well. Uh, I am excited. I am fine if we, it feels very Bordeaux. I've added a lot of dye in here. Um, and I'm excited. I mean, there's definitely, I'm moving it and I don't know how deep these colors are going. I do see some pastels beneath the surface, but we will move the yarn a few times to keep adding more color. Oh, this is so pretty. It's hard because sometimes I'm like, ooh, did I go a little too heavy with some of those reds? Those are looking very, very deep. But on that flip side, colors always look deeper when they're wet than when they're dry, and I love how saturated this is. So, now what I am going to do is wait, I think, 10 minutes. I'm gonna make sure the heat's on low. We'll wait 10 minutes uh, for this color to absorb before we move the yarn in the pan. Let's flip this. I'm gonna start with the one in the middle. And so I'm definitely seeing some paler patches, but you can see we did get color penetration. It's just not super vibrant, and so, I mean, I think even with this technique, I will probably end up moving things, oh goodness, three, four times, adding more color, probably going lighter with the color uh, now that we have like a decent base. But yeah, like there's, there's more coverage here than we see if we had a lower volume of water in here. So I'm now going to, I think I'm gonna speed things up. Today is all about love, and clearly there's a lot in my personal life that I love, but when it comes to yarn, I love this sort of random technique of applying color. We've got three skeins of yarn, 300 grams in our pan right now, and we're dyeing them at the same time, but they are not gonna be identical because we're applying the colors randomly. You could go less random with this, and that is totally, totally fine. But I just enjoy creating these more random skeins. That's something that calls to my artistic nature and is something that if, I think if I was going to just be dying for Etsy versus dying for videos, 
this is probably the kind of technique that I would be playing with the most. Sometimes with lower water levels, sometimes with higher, sometimes with liquid dyes or powders, but this random combining of colors on the yarn itself in a pan is my favorite, I think it's my favorite way to dye. Yarn, <laughs> dye yarn. <laughs> After the second flip, I was really, really happy. The color penetration was great, and I didn't see any big white patches. There were a few pastel patches, and so I went in with some more pink to sort of zhuzh that up, and I was still planning on flipping it another time to check underneath the ties and just see that I was happy with our saturation level, but wahahoo! I waited about eight minutes between each flip to let the color set. Okay, let's do one final check. Just looking for any areas that are a little bit too pastel. The last two times I added on pink. This middle one is looking really good. So I think this one is totally fine. I want to add a tiny bit more over there. And how about you? I think just this one like little spot right there. But yeah, I think that this is the, definitely the last round of dye. You can get away with fewer. I just have like a vision. This time I'm going to go in with some of that electric violet again. And put a little over there, in here, little in there, may as well, there's like a few areas where it won't really hurt it to have a little more of some purple. Wait, I was like, the middle one is really good, and then I added a bunch of color over there. Uh, <laughs> so funny. Uh, it's easy to keep going and going and going with this. But by using the spoon and sort of pressing, pressing, pressing the color down, that helps. And... I'm really, really happy with this, even if these are going to be three different colorways. All right, we'll wait a final 10 minutes, and then we will officially be done with this. Okay, I'm going to turn off the heat, and let's take a peek. This is vibrant, but it's looking really, really cleared right now which is great. The water level has also go down, gone down significantly, which is just something to keep in mind while you are playing with this process. I'm gonna leave the yarn in here to cool for a bit. I'll remove it at some point, but once the yarn is completely cool, then we can go and wash it. But I am so thrilled with how saturated these colors are. See those little silver specks from the Lurex? Yay! Let's wash our beautiful Valentine's Day yarn. This is a saturated, pigmented, purple, pink, and there's some hints of red. A lot of the red, and uh-oh, we do have a little bit of bleeding. Some of the reds might read a little bit pink, but I think that Cherry Bomb is a fairly pink colorway. Um, it's a pinkish kind of red color anyway. But I'm very, very excited to see this dry. And I'm not really seeing more bleeding. Maybe a hair. It's possible we had some dye powder on our nylon zip ties. Um, or we could just have a little bleeding. Now we're going to add some clear dish soap. I am using cool tap water. Since it is really cold outside, there is a hint of warmth to it, so it's not completely cold. And, yep, we've got some bleeding. All right, I am going to go rinse this a number of times, see if we can get that bleeding to calm down, and then uh, I'll come and check back in. But again, we're seeing that pale pink. We've got a really saturated color, so I'm not super worried. Okay, so I did a second soap rinse and I saw less color come out. 
and honestly it's looking pretty good. But let's go ahead and test this and see what some soap will do. Um, but this is a cautionary tale that even if water is clear when you rinse it, it doesn't mean it might not bleed when you go and wash something that you've knit. So I always, always, always recommend washing hand dyed, indie dyed yarn for the first time on its own or with deep colors. Um, I'm seeing, you know, we're seeing some, some pinks come out with soap, but not so much with the cleared, with clear water. There are a few different things you can do at this point. And, you know, maybe there's like a tiny hint of pink, but most of it is staying in the yarn. You could add a yarn mop or a color catcher or something to help remove that excess dye from the yarn. You could add a splash of some white vinegar to your rinse bath and either wash it out or honestly leave that vinegar in there um, just to help uh, prevent the bleeding. And it's something that if you're dyeing your own yarn and the yarn was bleeding a bit in the wash but it wasn't so bad, after you knit with it and you want to block the project, I would add vinegar to your blocking water. Um, because two things that definitely can cause bleeding is water that is a little too basic, so the pH is a little too high, or heat can also disrupt the bond. But here, in this case, like that really, really isn't bad. Um, if the bleeding is really po problematic and is more than just like a hint coming out, then I might go ahead and reset the yarn. I would set up a dedicated dye pot with at least 16 cups of water, add a lot of vinegar, and heat that up until you get to a simmer and then let it cool slowly, completely, in that water. And that is something that can help the situation as well. One final rinse. I don't exactly want to call this colorway bleeding hearts, <laughs> but I'm a little amused at the moment. Uh, gosh, this colorway is awesome. It is everything I wanted. And I think these bigger patches of color are gonna look so, so great on the dried Lorex blend because it's gonna, we're gonna have that shimmer. And I see no color, and I'm gonna call this a win and put the yarn through my spin dryer and then hang it up to dry. This colorway is amazing. I am not sure if the red really comes through. Yes, we definitely have lots of shades of pink. And there's some areas where I'm like, oh, that's definitely a red. But I think since there's so much pink and purple in here, some of those reds look like a really deep berry pink. Um, but I mean, I guess there's some true red in there. It's just a little hard to put your finger on. I think that most people would look at this and call this a pink and purple colorway versus a red, pink and purple colorway. The Lurex achieved just what I wanted. You can see that pop of silver throughout the entire skein of yarn. And yet the colors still stand up and shine through because the patches of color are big enough. I think if we were going for something a lot more subtle and speckled, then it would be a lot harder to see. In fact, with the technique we used, we probably have some speckles in this yarn, but since we effectively have these silver speckles throughout, uh, it's you know hard to see them. I think that this video, coupled with the last time I dyed this yarn base, really demonstrates that it is important to pick the right yarn base for your colorway. There's some colorways that will translate beautifully onto whatever yarn base you want to use, but then there's some other techniques that work better on certain yarn bases than others. And that's just something to keep in mind as you are planning your projects. I know that personally, when I am picking an inspiration for a colorway, I do like to consider the yarn base. And this is something that you can see sometimes in my 
dialogue live streams because depending on the photo, I might pick a more shimmery base or a more uh, tweed base or something because it feels to fit in with whatever photograph I am drawing inspiration from. Today I was drawing more from a feeling, but I knew that I wanted to make a sparkly yarn for Valentine's Day and that that sparkle added into my vision. From me to all of you, happy Valentine's Day everyone. Make sure you're subscribed to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel, give the video a thumbs up, and press that bell icon to turn on notifications so you never miss a new video. I publish at least two videos every single week, and we do live streams and unboxings and have a ton of fun. There is a Facebook group for Chemnitz fans called Chemnitz Lab. You can find details in the video description, but it's a great place to ask questions, share your own dyeing experiments, and engage with photographs with more members of this community. Leave a comment below with any questions you have. I try to respond to as many comments as I can. If you love this love-inspired yarn that I dyed for Valentine's Day, go and check out the Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop. All three skeins will be added to the shop by the time this video goes out. If they are sold out, don't worry, the shop is filled with over a hundred skeins of hand-dyed yarn featured in my videos and I am constantly updating it with new things and sometimes you can even get some sneak peeks of things that are coming up because the yarn might be in the shop before the video has come out. You can find a link to the Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop in the video description and up in the right hand corner iCard. What colors would you have picked for a love inspired color play? I think that there's many different ways that I could have gone with this and I'm curious to hear what you guys think. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and thank you so much for watching.